Guys, on the table in front of you, you see the Cold Steel Kudu. Now, this is probably one of the best sub $20 knives on the market. Cold Steel has a few of them. I also have got in my pocket the Mini Tough Light, which is another sub $30 knife. They really knock it out of the park with some of their budget options. And this is another great one. So let's turn it around. We're going to take a look at what I think is the best sub $20 knife on the market right now. Guys, like I said in the intro, I think that this is probably the best cheap knife on the market. Now, there's other cheap knives out there, but like this is absolutely a very good knife. Um, it does have some problems, but we're going to take a look at the good and the bad. I will tell you, I have done a lot of cutting with this because it does cut really well. So you guys know this is the Cold Steel Kudu. These are sub $20. I think these are $12 right now. So um, I, I didn't think that I would do a video about this. Again, uh, I figured we would just do the one video and, but I've been carrying, well, I've been using it for a lot of stuff here around the house. So I thought we'd do a full review. So first things first, let's do some size comparison because this is not a little knife. Your first knife is my Grimsmo Norseman, which is finally off the disabled list. As you can see, I had a, I had a screw come loose. I don't know how, uh, but a screw came loose and I had to wait on John and Eric to send me a new screw. So this is not a small knife. You can see this is very big. This is a very big knife. So there's your first knife. Your next knife is going to be something more reasonable. The CJRB Lago button lock. And as you can see, once again, not a real big knife for comparison. Uh, but I mean, it's not a small knife either. This thing is really, really big. And then again, as always, your final knife is going to be the Chris Reese Sabenza Large 21. So you can see here side by side, this is a very large knife. Uh, the Chris Reese Sabenza Large 21 is not a huge knife. It's just about a, a good average size knife. So it's a really good size comparison. Let's get this out of here and we're going to talk about this. I don't think this is going to be a real long video um, because it's got some good points. It's got some bad points. So let's get it out of the way and talk about the Cold Steel Kudu. Now, this knife came to me from Stacy Bolstered Blades. She had one laying around. She said she didn't mind parting with. She really didn't like it. So I will try to find a spec sheet and I'll put it up here in the middle uh, as best I can if I can find one. So basically what you have is Cold Steel's take on a South African style knife. It is a ring lock. Now, ring locks are just a lock back. Um, a lot like what you would get on a... Hang on a second. Let me grab it. Here's the Cold Steel Mini Tough Light that 2A Dave got me for Christmas. So a back lock is just basically the same thing. It's a rocker style lock. It locks in here and you push here to lift that up and out. Yes, this is a triad lock, but basically it's just a modified back lock. So what you have on this is a different take, a different style of back lock. So if you look here, there's a little pin on that. There's these little ratchets to keep it from closing on you. So it ratchets up and then this little cutout drops over it. Now it's really similar to a back lock. Back lock uses a key and a slot. This uses a key and a slot as well. And instead of having a button here that you push down on, you simply push your finger here and you lift up on the ring ever so slightly and it unlocks. Now I have not, well, I, I should get my finger out of the way. I have not been able to make it fail just by putting pressure on the back. I did not do any spine whack tests, but I do know that these are supposed to be really robust in the locking department. And then you have that, that nice safety feature. That is a safety feature, having it ratchet like that. So it just doesn't fall back shut on you. Um, so it's a really robust lock. To tell you the truth, I'm kind of impressed with it. I played around with it a lot trying to make it fail and I could not. The only time I was able to make it fail was if I pushed up this way um, and that was to like intentional. Um, so to cut with it, this thing's really comfortable. It's got a big long handle where you can get a lot of purchase and you can get a lot of leverage. Um, it is in 5CR, but I have not sharpened this yet, and I did cut up a good bit of cardboard with this. I'll show you a picture um, of what I cut up because I've got a box in here. My recycle bin is completely full. I've been doing so much cut testing. Um, so it does cut really well, and a lot of that has to do with it's fairly thin blade stock that comes down to a fairly thin grind, and then it's ground 
pretty well, I have to say. And if you know anything about cold steel knives, you know that they always, always get their heat treat right. So I think this is in need of a touch up. It's probably in need a little bit of a touch up because I have cut a bunch of cardboard, but it's not dull to the point where it's not serviceable. And then, uh, like I said, even though I've cut a lot of cardboard, you can see here, I'm not sure 100% if that's my doing, this this area here at the edge. Um, that is, that would be in the area where I was finishing cut. I don't know if I've just scuffed that up with the abrasive of the cardboard or that's a remnant of the grind. It looks like it might more be a remnant of the grind on it. But what I was saying is the finish on the blade has held up really well. It had a pretty fine polish to it uh, for a cheap knife. You can see, there we are. Uh, there's the camera and everything. Um, so it has held up really well. I don't feel any real play in it. There's not any blade play in it to speak of. Um, I did have the pivot get a little loose one time, but you know, that happens and I Loctited the screw in. So that being said, like all those things, you know, in, in concert, make it a pretty good knife. I wouldn't shy away from, from giving this as a gift. There are a couple negatives. Um, and so we're going to turn this around. We'll look at the negatives on this. But for the, the price you get on this knife, at the price it's at, I'm not going to really complain too much. So, yep, let's flip it around. Flip side of the knife, flip side of the story. All right. First of all, the elephant in the room is the ring on it. Now, the ring on it, it doesn't bother me too much, but it is awkward. I will say it's awkward, it's in the way, it's bothersome, it stands up. It does act as a handguard of sorts, but it does get in the way and it rattles, it makes a bunch of noise. Um, it, it, the lock being robust aside, I would probably, I'm gonna wind up replacing this with a loop of paracord. Um, I already replaced the split ring that was on it because the one that was on it was very, very sharp on the edges and it actually made my finger sore. Uh, this is much more rounded. Um, the next thing, it's in 5CR. This is not a real good steal. Like I said, these things are way under $20. I think these are like $10 or $12. I'll put an actual price up here somewhere. Um, but they are in 5CR. And so you're, you're, you're not dealing with high end, high end materials. Uh, the handles, I will say though, the handles are very, very stable for as cheap as they look. That I, I meant to say that in the beginning. Uh, next thing up, uh, it's it's not very well centered. Uh, it does have a double uh, screw type pivot, and I tried to walk the pivot back and forth, and I just couldn't do anything about it. And I think a lot of it has to do with, if you look here, it's centered. I don't think the blade is 100% straight. I think it does have a bit of a bow to it. And I felt that in cutting. You can kind of see where the blade just looks like the tip is down further on this side. And if you look, that makes sense because that's the side it favors. I believe that the, bay, the blade may be a little bowed. Now, I didn't notice anything really in cutting until I went left-handed and it felt like it cut differently. Uh, it was just something I was just curious about. So that might be an issue uh, with some people and then the final thing is, like I said, the pivot did come loose and I got a lot of blade play. I did tighten that pivot down and Loctite it in place and I haven't had any issues. But I'm gonna say that those handles are about bulletproof. I wish I had touched on that in, in the good stuff. So all in all, even though it has some bad stuff, I mean, it's the stuff you would expect in a knife that is significantly under $20, just barely over $10. But I'm gonna tell you right now, compared to other $10 knives, this is leaps and bounds, night and day, completely different and better. Um, and it's not unattractive. I mean, even, I mean, if you're just into simple things, the final thing I could say that's bad about it is it does not have a pocket clip. Uh, you can put this in your pocket and then let the ring sit on the outside and act like a pocket clip, but it sometimes it still slips and then it gets in your pocket, it sits sideways, and you can tell by the shape of it. And then it looks like you've stuffed your pants to impress girls at the bar. So that's all I've got on this one. We're going to turn it around. We're going to have some final thoughts and send you out about your day. But yes, thank you very much, Stacy Bolster Blades. 
I do, I do actually like this a lot, and it gets a lot of use. Well, guys, I didn't think about it in the intro that the Wendy Peppercorn, she knows what she's doing shirt. Yeah, it's a it's a Sandlot reference. I didn't think it. I didn't think about it, but it may not show up in the green screen edit. So, uh, <laughs> I apologize if I was non corporeal. Um, yeah, I really do like this knife a lot, and I'm really surprised at how well it's performed, how well it's held its edge, and everything that it has going for it, it does have some downsides. But, typical of cold steel, you're getting some pretty good bang for your buck. They really do knock it out of the park on, on your budget. If you're looking for a very good knife on a budget, cold steel is the way to go. So... Yeah, guys, that's that's about all I've got on this one. I, I'm, like I said, pleasantly surprised and really upset with myself that I did not get one sooner. I've seen them around for years and just kind of assumed they were just going to be trash. So, guys, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why I can't change the content. If you don't, tell me what it is you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's a simple like, share, subscribe drop a comment, hit the bell icon, make sure you've got the bell icon set to all, make sure you've got notifications turned on your device. That is a lot of stuff, but it absolutely is the best way. Liking a video gets a channel closer to a one-to-one -one view to like ratio, and it absolutely does help channels. So if you've watched the video for more than 30 seconds, you haven't liked it, you are doing channels you love a disservice. Um, other ways you can support the channel if you want to do it financially. I have a ton of affiliate links. I will put a link to this up as an affiliate link uh, in the description so you can see and you can use that affiliate link. Even if you're not buying the knife, you can use it for other stuff and I still get credit for it on Amazon. I have two affiliates that have discounts associated with them. They are Coffee Brand Coffee, 5% off your overall order. And through New Year's, Atlas VP... Atlas VPN is uh, running 85% off a two-year subscription. It's the one... It's the... Eight, it's the a uh, VPN I use here. My wife watches Japanese TV that she can't see any other way with that VPN. Um, other ways you can do it, I have a membership. The membership is tier-based. Everyone has access to the Gilded server, which is just like Discord baseline and premium tier members are entered into giveaways that I do on the Gilded server. Sometimes I do them here, but typically it's on the Gilded server and, and the premium tier guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series that's behind that paywall here on YouTube. And the final way is I do have a merchandise store where you can pick up my merchandise or other creators' merchandise at a discount of 10% if you use my coupon code Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, all one word, saves you 10% at checkout. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section. It makes it easier for me and Nico to moderate the channel. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I'll see you in the next video.